speech on education has spoken briefly to cameras and is uh, will shortly make his way back to Washington. They are checking out uh, Air Force One now. Let's go uh, to Atlanta. Chad Myers can talk to us a bit about the air traffic problems. Chad, are you there? Aaron, yes. Um, all of the airports across the country have been shut down. We started with Zone New York, which includes Islip, Newark, JFK, LaGuardia, all the way down to Philadelphia, and then IAH, Houston, and then San Francisco, and then LA. They were just falling like a deck of cards, and then all of a sudden the FAH just said, we're shutting down everything. All flights have been canceled and for another seven hours, which is about five o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll reignite there. We'll take a look what's going on after that. The probability of extension, as they call that, is high, which means even after 5 o'clock, the airports may still be shut down. We'll keep watching it for you here from Atlanta. Um, Chad, just, uh, and if you don't know, just say you don't know. Do you, can, can you recall a situation where every airport in the country had been shut down? Absolutely not, except in wartime, of course, uh, Aaron, and obviously this is uh, not that. But uh, with all the airports, that, as they were going down from west to east, we could see them. And then we could eventually see from New York. And then they canceled Boston as we got the report that the first flight or one of the possible hijack flights did come out of Boston. And then it just started going down from there. But never, ever before have we ever seen all of the airports shut down like this, not this quickly. Chad, thank you. Stay on this for a while. We'll get back to you. We know that many people are... Uh, just joining us, we want to get everyone on the same page before we move on. So one more time, let's go through the sequence of events. At about 8.45 Eastern Time, a plane crashed into uh, the foremost of those towers that are the World, the World Trade Center. Uh, that's uh, Air Force One you see in Florida, the president on board. Uh, obviously, extraordinary security around the plane before the president got on, and the president is heading back to Washington. A short time ago, the president made a statement. He said, terrorism against our nation will not stand. The government will hunt down those responsible. Mr. Bush said today, we've had a national tragedy. Two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center, an apparent terrorist attack on the country. And we also have a report now that the, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon, and we have a large fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon is being evacuated as we speak now. The White House has been evacuated as well. CNN's John King joins us on the phone. John. Aaron, I'm standing in Lafayette Park directly across from the White House, perhaps about 200 yards from the White House residence itself. The Secret Service has pushed most people all the way back to the other side of the park trying to avoid having that done to me at the moment. Just moments ago, they started slowly evacuating the White House about 30 minutes ago, and then in the last five minutes, people have come running out of the White House and the old executive office building, the build, which is the office building right directly across from the White House. About 10 minutes ago, there was a white jet circling overhead. Now, you generally don't see planes in the area over the White House. That is restricted airspace. No reason to believe that this jet was there for any nefarious purposes, but the Secret Service was very concerned, pointing up at the jet in the sky. It is out of sight now, best we can tell, but they've evacuated the entire White House staff and the old executive office, as well as some townhouses that are government offices. Many of our viewers might know Blair House, where other international leaders stay when they are in Washington. That block of townhouses has been evacuated as well, and they are pushing us now back toward H Street, which is the next main street to the north from Pennsylvania Avenue across from the White House. Okay, John, hang on one second. We're also getting reports at the Capitol, the Treasury Building also being evacuated. John, is this evacuation from the White House, was it orderly? Did it seem panicky? How would you characterize it? It started off as orderly, much like we get when there are occasional bomb scares near the White House. But then, again, in the last 10 minutes or so, the people who came out the last Several hundred I saw leaving the grounds were told and ordered by the Secret Service to run. They were running through the gates. These are, of course, professionals in business suits. I'm also told that prior to that, and we don't know the current situation, that the vice president and other administration officials on the scene were meeting in the White House Situation Room, which is in the basement of the White House. Whether they have stayed on the complex or not is unknown to us at this moment. I spoke to an administration official shortly after the president delivered his statement. He said, obviously, the operating assumption here is terrorism. The initial assumption this official said was that this had something to do, or at least they were looking into any possible connections with Osama bin Laden. The administration recently released a warning that they thought Osama bin Laden might strike out against U.S. targets. 
Uh, just to add, John, a bit to what you've been saying, we're getting a report from Associated Press now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received what AP is describing as a credible, <coughs> excuse me, a credible threat of a terrorist attack against the White House itself. Um, and I, I expect you'll be checking that out. We'll try and confirm that, but that's what AP is reporting right now. Again, this all began about an hour and 15 minutes ago here in Lower Manhattan when the first of two planes crashed in to the first of the two towers behind me at the World Trade Center. And you can see the smoke billowing out of the, of the front tower now. And then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene, as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners, a second plane drove in too. And you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape and there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least and this is the first time I've seen that tape come through the back side of the tower I guess that would be the south side of the tower and and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side um, again that was about a half hour after the first attack which was at about 8:45. Look, you want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City and nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed apparently as part of whatever this operation has been and uh, is, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Well, the, uh, Aaron, the, uh, there is a lot of confusion here at the Pentagon. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor, uh, on the Army corridor. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal uh, uh, coming past their window. The Pentagon has been evacuated. Uh, emergency services personnel were rushing to reports of several people trapped in the building. Most of the building's 24,000 people are outside of the building or in the center courtyard uh, as the emergency teams try to sort out what has happened here. There is, of course, uh, thick black smoke billowing from the scene. Uh, there is a lot of confusion. The Defense Protective Service, which is the police force here in the Pentagon, has been urging people to get out of the building uh, and move away from the scene so they can handle the uh, emergency situation. Again, it appears that an aircraft of some sort did hit the side of the Pentagon, the, the west front, which uh, faces sort of toward Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, it's a, a corridor where a lot of Army offices are located. Wow. And some Jamie, people were... Jamie, I need you to stop for a second. There has just been a huge explosion. We can see uh, a billowing smoke rising. And I can't, I'll, I'll tell you that I can't see that second tower. But y there was a cascade of sparks and fire. And now this, it looks almost like a mushroom cloud explosion, this huge billowing smoke in the second tower. This was the second of the two towers hit. And I, you know, I cannot see behind that smoke, obviously, as you can either. The first tower in front has not changed. And we see this extraordinarily and frightening scene behind us of this second tower now just encased in smoke. What is behind it, I, I cannot tell you. But just look at that. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. Again, this is going on now in two cities. We have a report that uh, there is a fire at the State Department as well, and that is being evacuated. So we've got fires at the Pentagon evacuated, the State Department evacuated, the White House evacuated on the basis of what the Secret Service describes as a, as a credible terrorist threat. We have two explosions, two planes hitting the World Trade Center here in New York. And what this second explosion was that took place about a part of the south, that would be the South Tower, has apparently collapsed. We don't know if that was from the impact of this first plane that hit it or whether something else has happened there. We'll work on that. Our Washington bureau chief, Frank Cessno, is on the phone. Frank, what are you hearing?
Aaron, I just drove past the Pentagon across the 14th Street Bridge, which is now choked with traffic. We're beginning to hear uh, emergency sirens and rescue personnel.